Today we are hitting the Rubicon Trail. I've got my friend Sean with Story Till Now here. He's never done it. I've, in fact, almost everybody in this group has never done it. So we're gonna lead a bunch of these Patreon supporters through what I think is one of the best trails in America. This is one of those adventures where at the end, everyone has to call in sick because our two day trip turns into a three day. We start running out of food, water. It's a, it's a whole thing we'll get into later. But right now, things are going great. So let's enjoy the weather and enjoy the rocks. All right, everybody ready? In for the party. There is not a Canadian equivalent to the Rubicon Trail. So I know that Sean is super excited to be down here running this trail with me. And we even invited a few of our Patreon subscribers to run the trail with us. All right, guys, we're moving up. Just uh, give a shout if anyone feels it. Everybody good back there? Yeah, just slowly picking their way through. Now that we've made it through the gatekeeper, we can work our way down into the bowl. And the bowl is just cool. It's not super technical or anything like that. There's a couple different bumps and stuff that you can choose to go over, but this is a big granite slab that goes down into a valley and then goes back up to a place called Beer Tree. There's an easier route to the right here, Jason, if you don't want to come down that steep drop. It's a big one. are actively searching for a lunch space. Come on. There we go. So anyway, we're going to find a shady spot. We're going to have some lunch. We're going to hang out, get to know some of these folks a little bit. Because it's people from all over the country. None of us really know each other. I shouldn't say none of us. A lot of us don't really know each other. And uh, this is a great way to get to know people that you just met for the first time, is to go out and have fun experiences with them. Over the last 18 years of going off-road with people, I've found that there are two primary ways that people get to know each other on the trail. One would be, of course, when people break. As soon as you have a group of people having to turn into a team and fix something as a group, that definitely brings people together. But the other one is simple. It's just food. Pulling over, having some food, chatting about your kids, all these different things add up to where at the end of a trip you really feel like you get to know somebody and how they handle stress and how they handle a little bit of sleep or handle being dirty. Today, we're gonna get a healthy dose of both. And right now, we're gonna start with a little bit of coffee. Oh, look at that. That's a good neighbor right there. Hey, you know, I try to be friendly, eh? Yeah. <laughs> I'm really sorry about this, but yeah, I'm gonna so drink all your coffee. Got you some fresh coffee there. Thank you so much, man. This is gonna really help give me a pick-me-up. Hey, no problem. Hey, I'm all jacked up on coffee. Let's make some good time. Unfortunately, we got a late start to the Rubicon, which is why almost immediately you watched us have lunch, and that's because the guy leading the group to the Rubicon took a wrong turn and it cost us like 20 plus miles, and that leader was me, unfortunately. So anyway, we got to the trail like 10.30 or 10 somewhere in there, which is way too late to try to be so ambitious as far as how much we're going to see today, but in any case, we have a lot of time to make up because I would like to get to Cadillac Hill tonight if at all possible or at least Rubicon Springs. We'll see. It's pretty far from where we're currently located. I'm hoping that we can make some pretty good time, no one has any issues, and we can climb over these rocks as quickly as possible. Hey, you're dead on the rock. Right, you're over. Everyone doing good back there? I'm good. Look 
Little Tippy. At this point in the adventure, we finally cross Ellis Bridge, which if you look it up, it's about two miles, like 1.8 miles into the entire trail. Considering that the entire trail is 22 miles long, this is not very good. We're doing horrible to be able to do this all in two days with one night. But we're all still hopeful. It feels like it's very early on in the trip, and we're gonna see if we can make up some time somewhere. My off-road truck just shut itself off for low oil pressure. You know, cause off-road and stuff. I have 14,000 miles on this truck now, and I get questions from you guys all the time about what do I think about this Tacoma now that I've got it built, it's on 38s. We've made it like a super capable off-road truck. Well, I've had two more problems show up today that I was not expecting. Was uh, that one of them? Yes, not this one. I was expecting him. <laughs> Cruise control system malfunction, this is a new one. Um, I already had a V, I've had a pre-collision system malfunction since about 1500 miles. I've had it to the dealer four times. And now that I've lifted and put tires in this truck, they, they, they don't care. Like <laughs> it's Nate's problem now. So we have the pre-collision system malfunction. We have check vehicle, uh, stability control system malfunction. And now we have a random cruise control system malfunction. And earlier today, while I was on one of the rocks, I wish I got it on camera, the whole truck just shut off because it said low, low oil pressure and it was when I was climbing rocks. Um, I've never had a vehicle do that of, of any year make and model. My wife's Gladiator doesn't do that and it's a 2021, same, same generation of truck. So it's a little frustrating. I love this truck, it looks amazing. This IFS system handles so good. The steering is outstanding but I just can't get away from these electrical gremlins. And then I, I have like four or five times while I'm rock crawling, had it say that the transmission temp is overheated and so it just kills the engine out of nowhere. If you're a Toyota Tacoma guru, please let me know in the comments. Let's hook up and please help me fix this. Are we ready to start moving forward? The next named obstacle is Walker Hill. And to be completely honest, I'm surprised that it's named at all. It's just not very difficult. There's not really anything of note that I would look out for, but perhaps it's just like a placeholder so you can tell people where you are on the Rubicon, maybe just how far you made it that day, or where your buddy broke down. In any case, the next obstacle worth mentioning is Soup Bowl. This is completely optional, but it is amazing. And if you like a challenge, this is a good one to do. This is Soup Bowl. Has anyone done Soup Bowl? You guys are from here. What'd you do with him? XJ. XJ, can you make it all the way up? Uh, no. No? <laughs> it's a tough one. The biggest problem by far, is the fact that we've got this moon dust covering everything. So not only are you flexed out, but the tires that are on the ground still don't have any traction. So this is one of those things that this is honestly a buggy line. Doesn't mean you can't be done a non-buggy, a non but it's a hard one. So you need a lot of flex. I think Aaron is the only one who has a shot. I'm gonna still put tires on it, see what I can do. But <laughs> this is a nasty obstacle. I couldn't make it in my TJ and it's my real rock crawler. So we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. Who wants to try it? I'm trying it. All right, you got one. Aaron, you're doing it right. Maybe three of us. I might. We got a might. Three, <laughs> three and a half of us are gonna try. If you make it look easy, I'll do it. If I make it look easy, I will not make it look easy. One thing I can promise is it will not look easy. If you're familiar with the channel, you know that I've got rock crawling Land Rovers, rock crawling Jeeps, and this rock crawling Toyota. And I approach all of these obstacles the exact same. It doesn't matter what I'm driving. I like to have the front locker off so I can get the front tires positioned exactly where I need them. Um, or if I need to, I can actuate the front locker on and off in order to get to where I need to be. And then we just slowly try to find where the traction is. In this case, I see a crack on one of these rocks. I'm gonna hit with the driver's side tire and a crack on the other side. I'm gonna hit with a passenger side tire because to me, that's gonna be the best way to get traction. Because if you can sink your tire down into a crack, then you're gonna get more of the tire contacting your terrain. Not 
How does it look if I just tried to go straight up right here? I learned a lot about Soup Bowl on this trip, and the main thing that I learned is it just needs some time. It sucks that it's almost five o'clock, we all have to find camp. I still have a few people behind me that want to try this obstacle, and it's just not the right conditions to do this in. You need to be able to have some time, you want to be able to play around with it, see what wheelbase works best in which spots. And uh, this is one that, spoiler alert, I don't get. <laughs> I don't, I'm not able to make it all the way up. I get super close, but this is something that I need to come back. I need to allow a couple of hours so I can really put some tires on it and figure out the right route for a 129 inch wheelbase, which is what this Toyota is. Oh, you thought you were yelling, stop! Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> That was close. Ah, that sucks. Well, everybody started yelling. I thought they were yelling to stop. Oh, they were yelling, like, they're yelling to go. Yeah. <laughs> they're yelling to go. I hit the wrong pedal, and here I am. Well, we almost had it. That was really close. Dang. It's a warm. It's always very squeezy. This old custom built flat fender has a 100 inch wheelbase, so it's like 29 inches shorter than my Tacoma, and it's on 42s. My knee jerk reaction is that he's going to need to take a slightly different line, but I don't know. We just need to get some tires on this obstacle with a couple different wheelbases, and I'm going to get to learn this so when I come back, I'll have a better shot at whatever vehicle it is that I'm driving. Just uh, back up just a hair more. A little more, a little more, a little more, a little more. Stop. Hard passenger right there. We're going to have you ride that ridge. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, that's exactly where we want it. Okay. Um, so here's what I'm thinking. I think that I want to try to wedge this tire into this crack. So if you, there's a crack right underneath my seat. So what I want you to do is try to aim your driver's side tire for this crack. That's there. Perfect. Okay, now try to turn driver as you're trying to climb it. Dude, give, give that a shot. That actually looks good. Oh my god, I, I feel like you can do it. Okay, try to give it a little bump. You're just, all four tires are trying to climb stuff with no traction. Okay, so you want to get a better start, so go back with another foot and give it the beans, dude. Right there, looks good. Just hit it. I'm going to guide Jason up the exact same route that I was trying to go up myself, which is want to put that driver's side tire right in between that crack to get maximum traction and pull the rest of the chassis up. He's honestly a hair too short for this, and I'm definitely a hair too long for this. But I think that with the right driving, both vehicles can make it all the way up. Turn the wheel right back and back and forth and see if you can get a traction anywhere. Lift it up! It's lifting up! It's lifting up! Oh my god! Oh dude! Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's go hard passenger. You got this, you got this. Can you go faster anymore? Woo! You got it! No, you got it! Just just drag it out. Just drag it out. Oh, 
it's almost a shame to distill these different obstacles into performance metrics like how many inch wheelbase you have or the vehicle weight but as someone who builds so many different vehicles i can't help it and when i look at aaron's rig i see something that is 117 inches so it's right in between my truck right in between jason's jeep and I think that he has the best chance out of all of us. And now that I've been able to kind of prove my theory that wedging that driver's side tire into the crack works, let's see if we can get Aaron to walk Soup Bowl. We don't want to lose this position. I want to make sure that we stay here. All you guys good. Uh, now, sir, it's a working driver. Hard drive. Hard drive. Dude, Mr. Aaron, nailing it, man. It was that was it was all spotting. That was yeah, all spotting. Well, thank you. I, uh, God, you've got such a great setup here. The suspension's good. The st super strong axles. I mean, you were the only one qualified to do that. I'm so impressed that this did it. It's really, it's too short to do it, but yeah, I know. you made it work too, man. Thanks, man. Bad props to both of you guys. Far more impressive. With him? Getting up there. That's because yeah. you're, you're, you you're Mr. Humble Pie over here. You're not going to talk about how great you are. <laughs> have one more big obstacle ahead of us today and that is Little Sluice. Little Sluice is one that can be difficult, it can be easy, again it just depends on tire size, wheelbase, different things like that. And my TJ, I walked this no problem without even having to get out or need to spot or anything. But I can tell that with a 130 inch wheelbase and only having a 38, this is going to be a challenge for me. Hey, just give me a holler if you want to start overlanding and I'll bring over the max track. We're catching, you're down, you're on the rocks you put in, so you're just going to start climbing right now in the back. Good. Hey, you're rolling a big rock with your left front tire. This truck really had no business being on this obstacle. I mean, we made it, don't get me wrong, but there's no glory in stacking 30 rocks to be able to drive 20 feet, in my opinion. My Jeep and my Land Rover would have been way better, only because they have such a shorter wheelbase and so much more ground clearance that they're a little bit better built for something like this, whereas my Toyota is built to be much more well-rounded. You don't need a trailer to use it or anything. It's a camping truck that can also rock crawl. So. We made it, but there's no no big victory march or anything because we definitely had to stack a crap load of rocks in order to get all the way through. Jason was smart, he took the bypass, and then Sean wanted to give it a try because, you know, Canadians can't let us Americans have all the fun. Sean's wheelbase is seven to eight inches longer than mine and he has a slightly smaller tire. So with that in mind, and time is definitely a factor, we decided to pre-stack some rocks before he got there in hopes that we don't spend all day here. I think you're on your dip, your rear dip. Now, hard passenger, you're going to be grinding your wheel a little bit, but from this race thing. All right, now, hard. Towards me. With a little bit of spotting and good wheel placement, we were able to guide Sean through in about 20 minutes or so. A couple of our Patreon supporters made it through relatively easy. It wasn't too bad with all the pre-stacked rocks and whatnot. And so now we're ready to go find camp. All right, guys, let's have a quick talk. It is 7 o'clock, and uh, we need to get to... If you guys want to camp near water, we have got a lot of time to make up. So I'm going to suggest we take this bypass up to my right, and we just start moving. Do it. And four. Copy that.
Obviously, it takes a little extra time to move a group this big through the woods, especially over big rocks. That said, we didn't exactly get the camp we wanted, but we did find a pretty good spot, but not before we had someone in our group have a little bit of tire trouble. So we can actually put a jack under the axle, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But if we use the high lift, you're gonna have to boot, it still have to be four feet in the air before it's yeah. gonna let off the tire. Keep going. Two feet. I know that it's always fun and tempting to do the lighter fluid trick on tires, but we're in a place that is highly combustible. It's a legendary trail. I don't want to burn it to the ground. And there's currently a burn ban in effect. So let's find another way to do this without fire. Let me show you all a trick. This is how Nate sets tires. All right, I gotta see this. You poke a little hole, do a little pokey poke. All right, she's ready to be jacked whoa, up. Whoa. Then you got we're, yourself we're done a, thing, a little right? squirt bottle. Ideally, you put a little dish soap in there, and then this will go right on. You got some Dawn? You got Dawn? I do have Oh, one. dude. This is about to be gangster. <laughs> oh, that's the good stuff. The top will be flat. Welcome to first trail fix, buddy. <laughs> yeah. No, we're going to say no. Yeah. We're just going to go here. Oh, yeah. No, we're sure. We should be good now. Yeah, we'll get you awesome. fixed up. We'll get you. All right. Sure, we douse it. First plan from all that. Oh, sorry. This is what we want right here. Oh, there I like it. Go. Oh, I like it. All right, we'll put air to it. Yeah, that's going. Oh, yeah. Bottom. Bottom. We might need to spin it. No, kick it. Kick it. Make oh, yeah, it's going. Times. It's going. Yeah. Going. Yep. All right. All right. You're good. Out. With that problem resolved, we finally have to get to camp. Everybody is exhausted, and I think we all have the same feeling, and that is that tomorrow is going to be a huge day. Good morning. This is the part of uh, the YouTube videos that you don't see. The uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cameras that I have to download footage from, and uh, all the running around that Sean and I do in order to bring these videos to you. So, future Nate, I hope you do a good job editing this and that everyone enjoys it because it's a lot of work. So, I'm going to get all these cards downloaded, get everything cleared, get everything charging. And then we've got a big day ahead of us in order to make it all the way to the end of the Rubicon. I gotta be honest, we had a pretty slow morning, but after some breakfast burritos and some coffee, we were ready to get to work because we had a huge day ahead of us and that's if nothing breaks. I think Buck Island Reservoir is the most beautiful part of this trail so far and I for one would like to come back and spend more time here. I would like to come back with you and spend more time here.
really interesting to watch Sean's gladiator go up this obstacle after watching mine go up this obstacle, and it really shows how important departure angle is. This is exactly what used to happen to me when I had the factory bed, and even when I cut eight inches out of the factory bed and raised my bumper way up with a custom bumper, I still was constantly struggling with that departure angle. And I am on a 38, but I don't think that if Sean was on a 38 instead of a 37, that extra half inch of clearance on the axles would make a difference in this instance. Once again, I apologize for nerding out, but as someone who likes to build these trucks, I can't help but observe and figure out how I wanna build the next project after looking at all the data. Somebody likes Michelob Ultra and Skull. You've already heard me mention multiple times in this video that time is definitely a factor, but the biggest problem, honestly, is just me. I can't help myself. I love to take the hard line, especially with the brand new build, to really see what the truck's capable of. And so you're watching a whole bunch of optional lines that are making today much longer than it has to be. And that's entirely my fault. But look how much fun we're having. You're on your hits, Sean. I know. You need me to come back? Do you like? Do you need somebody to winch to or anything? I'm kind of slipping sideways. I just need to get up over a hunt. So probably winch is a good call. Hey, it's almost noon and we've gone like not very you're far. Right. From camp. <laughs> you're only eight inches off the ground on this side. You're good. All these optional lines have been super fun, but we're at a point now where we cannot afford to take any more. So that means taking all the bypasses that we can. Uh, it means eating while we're driving, not even stopping for lunch. And we definitely don't have time for anybody to get stuck or break down. Hey, you guys on the bypass, stop and shut your motors off. Looks like somebody might be leaking oil. He's leaking diesel. Okay, never mind. We found our leak. It's uh, Leo leaking diesel. He's leaking diesel. It's not out of the tank, is it? He ain't gonna get out of here, I know that. Well, uh, let him know that we don't have time for this, so he's gonna have to unbreak it. How about, how about, how about it's just a, put, here's, let's, let's think of the best case scenario. It's just a push to connect fitting. Yes. It just, it pulled apart. All we gotta do is just I'm, put it. I'm, I'm hoping it's just a seal. I'm hoping it's a seal. Like the seal for the filter? Mm -hmm, is yeah. it a spin on? I don't know, we'll see. It, I, oh. it's a, it should be a spin on. Yeah. Now you guys are getting all dieselly. That's cool. Well, he's getting all yeah. diesel. I'm getting mildly dieselly. Pretty it's awesome. Not too bad. Here in the body uh, you can see right? exactly where it hit. If you go back and look at the the point of impact. So, do you regret coming out with uh, Jonathan and Nate out here? Absolutely not. You still having fun? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Rubbing is racing. It turns out on the Eco Diesel Jeeps, Jeep decided to locate the plastic fuel filter housing underneath the rig, which. I mean, that's not that big of a deal as long as it's not a giant fuel filter housing, which this is, and it doesn't hang down below the frame rail, which this does. So they put a skid plate on it, and that skid plate actually is halfway decent for a factory skid plate, but if with enough abuse, the skid plate will end up getting bent into the plastic housing and then cracking it and just making you lose diesel all over the place, which is exactly what's going on here. So the cut, there's a there's a metal cover that covers this. He hit it on a rock and it sheared the bolt yeah. and drove it into the into the filter cover, which gra gouged a big giant hole into there. Mm -hmm. So we got a we got a hole here that just and then cracked right along the edge. In the past, I haven't had good luck with epoxies and fuel. Fuel usually likes to eat different types of plastics, which is essentially what an epoxy is. But we've got some of this Gorilla Glue JB Weld type of product. I've never seen it before, so we're gonna give it a shot and see if this is going to work out for us. We're just going to sit it in the sun, let it bake for a little while, put it back on, and see what happens. You see that bad boy. And you can see where I hit that housing. Boom shakalaka. Tweaked all these holes. So now my friend Aaron and I are going to try to figure out a way to straighten this out and make it to where it's not touching that plastic housing and keep our fingers crossed so that we have to make a trip to the dealer. At least, I mean, he'll have, he'll have to make a trip to the dealer, just hopefully not today. <laughs> hey, Sean, or anybody else up there, do you have a copy? We're here, go. How about you guys get going down the trail? All your weight. Roger. Very, very slow as a group this big, and uh, I think it makes a lot of sense to have you guys making some uh, headway, and we'll catch up no problem. I'll catch you, don't worry. All right, buddy. See you later. 
of you. Love you more. Does it look like we're making any difference? Looks like he did. A little bit. Where you're, yeah. Looks like right here is the worst of it. Yeah. Well, there it goes. No way. I mean, we may have it. Talk about a long shot. I cannot believe that worked, but we are way behind, obviously. We've been behind on, behind the schedule since we woke up, essentially. It's now 2.30. We're not even a third of the way through the Rubicon, and the goal was to be on the road today at some point and, like, headed back home. So let's make some good time, let's make some good decisions, and let's do some good driving. All right, let's go see what the rest of the Rubicon has to offer. made outstanding time down Big Sluice, and before we knew it, we caught up to the rest of the group. But unfortunately, our good luck was about to run out. Our uh, diesel repair just failed. So, I'm gonna get down this rocky section, and I'm gonna walk back up and see how bad it is. I, I have no idea. We sent the other group down the trail so they could continue to make good time in hopes that we could just catch up to them after we figure out a fix. Yeah, and buddy. believe it or not, I do have another trick up my sleeve. I've only done this in my shop with the proper tools, but I think that we could cobble together the right stuff to melt down nylon zip ties and use that as welding rod to hopefully do a, like, bush style plastic weld to try to get this thing to stick together. Um, there's no cure time with a plastic weld. It's all in just making sure that you have enough of the welding rod, or in this case, nylon zip ties. And I think that we're gonna end up needing to use like a hot screwdriver or something like that as an actual plastic welder or soldering iron. I mean, it melts like nylon. I have no idea what it is. <clears throat> I've never heard of or seen a repair done in this way. This is definitely not ideal, but I'm just trying to use as much creative thinking as I can to try to get us out of this mess. So I don't have to go all the way up to the dealership and get new parts. But what I did is I just treated it just like it was in the shop. I just had different tools. We have to clean what we're welding. The parent materials have to be able to stick together and actually mix. So that means that we have to get all the diesel out of this thing. So we washed it and cleaned it really good. Then we used alcohol to help evaporate any extra water or any diesel off of this. So then we didn't have any rubbing alcohol. We just used a little bit of whiskey. Then we blew it off with an air nozzle to help evaporate everything out of all the little nooks and crannies. So we had a clean surface to work on. Then I heated up the surface of the canister until I could see it just kind of glaze over and get tacky. Then I'd heat it up the the nylon zip tie and then I just started to lay down chunks of zip tie and then uh, heating up the screwdriver and using that to really like mix the different materials together and make sure that we can marry both parent materials as good as we can for what we're doing. I think it goes without saying to have a fire extinguisher nearby if you ever have to do something like this. I'm sure that people are going to see this trick and they're going to want to try it if they break something important plastic in the woods. Just proceed with caution. Use your head and and, and, and do the best you can. Well, yeah, <laughs> quite an effort. <laughs> quite an effort for there. sure. You can't back up now. You're kind of uh, down stuck for a little there. bit. Yeah, that's yeah. And just in the interest nice of safety. I hear Here's the pump. The, fuel. the pump's pumping. I hear it. It's on. Pump just, pump just stopped. So it's probably at pressure. Start it. Start it. Start it. Yeah, give it a shot. It started pretty easy last time. You got any leaks? No, I don't see anything. I don't yeah. see anything. Yeah, we did it.
it was just the four of us, we made great time. We blasted right through Rubicon Springs, and before we knew it, we were going up Cadillac Hill, which is one of my personal favorite parts of the Rubicon. There's some off-camber spots, there's some great views, it's got a little bit of everything. And my favorite part about Cadillac Hill is that's where we're staying tonight. We're gonna stay right at the top, and that means that we finally get to stop driving, we get to sit in a chair and have some food. I'm sure there's a lot of you who are watching that are wondering, did that plastic weld job actually hold up? And it absolutely did. I'm pleased to report it completely worked until it hit another rock <laughs> towards the top of Cadillac Hill. Poor Leo hit another rock with this thing, which is, again, not Leo's fault, definitely Jeep's fault. And uh, so Aaron pulled him all the way back up to the top. And, you know, you could get down and be frustrated, but we were having one hell of a time. It was a beautiful night. We were amongst great people. And so we just took advantage of the situation. I did my best to try to re-plasti weld our plasti weld that was built on a foundation of JB Weld. And we all just kind of got a kick out of the situation. And we knew it had to be done. Some people break down on their way to work on the freeway, or they break down on a family vacation, or on their way to church, whatever. But we're broke down on one of the most beautiful places in the country. On a perfect night, there's not even that many bugs. We have a lot to be thankful for. And yeah, I say we, even though my Toyota's just fine, because when you're at a place like this, you're a team. And when one person is broke down, that means we're all broke down. So we have a big day ahead of us. Um, I'm gonna have some of the guys go ahead, take off, go home, I got this. But a few of us are gonna hang back, we're gonna make sure that we can take care of Leo, we're gonna get him the parts he needs, this is gonna be a big day. But once again, how lucky are we to be broke down in such a beautiful place? Hey Leo. Hello. <laughs> What's going on? It's been a day, been a day. <laughs> so, our repair, has failed. What's the 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 really crappy part about all this is that if uh, if that rock didn't come up and grab that filter yesterday, we would still be golden. Yep. But our second, the thing is, being repairing over the repair over the repair, it's just it's not working. <laughs> I thought for sure that uh, that we were going to be able to make it out. So we are going to bolt ahead of everyone. We have no choice. And as soon as we have service, Leo's going to be calling around to all the Jeep dealers to find this part because we have to get this part in order to leave the trail. And my son's birthday is like tomorrow or uh, the day after. So I, and I've got basically a day and a half, two days to travel home. So it's gonna be a couple of late nights for us. Right now, Leo and I are gonna go full ultra four mode in my Toyota and hopefully everything holds together. Calling around to a few places, we did find a dealership that had the whole assembly. Nobody had just the cap, there's just like a national shortage on it, probably because everyone's breaking them. But we did find the entire assembly. It's a couple hours away, it's over Donner Pass, so we just gotta make good time and try to make the most of having an early morning. We got what we needed. Now, a couple hours back to the trail, we gotta do half the Rubicon, fix it, do half the Rubicon and come back out. <laughs> I'm not going to film this part going back, so what we're going to do, I'm going to snap my fingers and we're going to be at his Jeep. We're here. We're ready to install this thing. In theory, this could be like a five minute install, but um, practice often conflicts with theory, so I'm going to set you up on a tripod and let's see what we can do. While I'm lying underneath Leo's Jeep trying to get him down the road, I realize that this trip is almost over and 
I can't help but feel so grateful to be here in the first place. I think that if you're watching this and you're thinking, those guys look like they're having a lot of fun and I've always wanted to do the Rubicon, I want to leave you with this. Life is very short. I woke up the other day and realized that I'm middle-aged. <laughs> middle, meaning if I'm lucky, I'm at the middle of my life right now. You know, barring some big catastrophe or, or cancer or some big health crisis, I'm in the middle. How many more trips like this do I have in my lifetime? And how many more trips like this do you have in your lifetime? Do you think it's 100? Because I bet it's not going to be. It probably won't even be 50. So after watching this video, if you're thinking at all that this looks appealing, start calling your friends, get a posse together, and go run these legendary trails before they're closed or before World War III starts. I, I don't want to end this video on a negative note, but I want to give you a sense of urgency that life is short, and if you want to do this, you need to do it now. This place is magical. Come and see it, enjoy your life, and enjoy these videos. I hope one day we meet on the trail. See you next time.